Hey guys, Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Welcome back. I wasn't going to do this one, however, I figured I'd throw up a camera since we're on this bowl joint kick. This one's a 98 Mitsubishi Eclipse. It uses a strut, so it goes, there's a little difference in how you can check these ball joints. However, this one came in, the complaint was a rattle noise in the front end. However, I just wanted to demonstrate how I go about checking these ball joints when you have a strut style suspension. When you think about it, the last suspension I showed you using a torsion bar style suspension, it was a little different, so you actually had a constant load on that control arm, so you had to jack up on it. When you have a strut, it's one assembly. So you can take a strut out of the car, and the spring will stay compressed inside that strut. Not fully compressed, I should say, but it'll stay retained inside that strut. So it'll only travel so far, and then it'll stop pushing on the control arm, or the spindle. This one, you could go about jacking it up on the lower control arm because the strut does mount to the lower control arm. It's a little different setup than most cars. However, it's very similar in many aspects. So I'm going to show you how you can go about checking the strut style suspension. You can do this on a lift, go underneath there with a pry bar. There's a lot of different ways. However, on the ground and with a solid surface, it's pretty straightforward. And I'll show you how I went about finding this lower ball joint. All right, let's do it to it. Alright, hopefully you can see this well. I got it jacked up on the front cross member, similar to what you would do if you were simply removing a tire or doing a brake job. I got a jack stand placed under it for a little extra safety. And uh, the main difference you'll see here from the last video I demonstrated on checking control arm loaded suspension for ball joints is I don't have it jacked up on a control arm. And that's because this one uses a strut assembly. Like I mentioned earlier, it's one unit. It will only travel so far before it runs out of travel and your spindle is still loose. And this would be similar if the, if the strut was mounted to the spindle. On this one it's a little different. It does go to the lower control arm so I could jack it up on the lower control arm to set it but it will give me the same results. So I got it jacked up like I mentioned and if I go and I, I try to feel it, I really don't feel nothing like in and out like you would on a really bad ball joint. And maybe that's why it was a little deceiving for the, the last person that checked it. And the tie rods feel good. You can check your front tie rods by doing a side to side as well. And a real bad ball joint will show up in that motion too. But the problem he's having, it has more play up and down in the ball joint. So if I were to take the tire and pick up on it, now you can hear that play. And as you notice, I did find a loose ball joint using that method. However, it took quite a bit of effort and it could be very easily overlooked. So what you do, and what you can do, make sure you have a jack stand underneath it and get yourself some leverage. In this case, I'll be using a pry bar, but you can use any means of leverage. You can use a piece of pipe or whatever you have. Have it jacked up enough so you, you could uh, easily place the pry bar underneath the tire. And now that you have a little extra leverage, Watch how easy it is for me to feel that loose ball joint. You can actually hear the clunking. And the reason that is, is because you got the weight of the tire, the weight of the spindle, and everything resting on that spindle. So there's a quite a bit of weight there, so a little bit of extra leverage goes a long ways. Alright, well that was just a quick tip. I hope it helps out. I'm going to go and change this lower ball joint. This is another complete control arm assembly. However, it's a pretty straightforward one. I'll throw up the camera and give you a quick guide. However, that's the technique I use for finding lower ball joints and loose components on strut style suspension. What I'm trying to show you here, guys, is the whole objective is to get the load off of those ball joints. So however you got a jacket to where there's no load on them ball joints is what you got to do to find a loose component. Because if it's loaded, you're simply not going to find it. Or you're using a lot of pressure, a lot of force, or a lot of leverage to find it. You can find them that way, I have in the past. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned guys. It takes a little time. That's the part that nobody likes, but you gotta make sure your surfaces are clean. 